Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. Welcome to our introduction to sphere equations in 3D space. We'll work some example problems in this video that have us write equations of spheres with different requirements and info given. First, we'll talk about the easy way to see the formula. The standard definition for a sphere here is that it's a 2D surface inside 3D space that has all of its points the same distance from a single point, and that same distance all the way around everywhere is called the radius and point we measure that same distance all around is called the center. We've got a sphere here in our 3D coordinate system, and the center of our sphere for now is at the origin at 0, 0, 0. So if we think about any point on our sphere here, and we also think about the straight line distance from the center to that point, no matter where it is, since any point will be the same distance from the center, then that's just going to be our distance formula in 3D space with one of the points being the origin. So we get that the distance from the center to any point on the sphere is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now we also obviously call this distance here, we call it the radius of the sphere. So the equation really says that the radius is equal to that distance. If we want to remove the square root from our expression, we can square both sides and say that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to r squared, and that formula will be true for any point on our sphere here. So here you've got our equation for a sphere centered at the origin with radius equal to r. This probably looks familiar. It's super similar to the equation for a circle centered at the origin in 2D space, but with this extra z term included because we're in 3D space here. Let's just answer a couple of quick questions here. Write the equation of a sphere with center at the origin and radius 3. So remember our equation that we're going off of here is when our center is at the origin. We have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to the radius squared. And we have center at the origin here. So of course we're going to be using x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to our radius squared. And if our radius is 3, then 3 squared gives us 9, right? So our equation for a sphere with radius 3 centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 9. Here going the other direction, now we have a formula. What is the center and radius for the following sphere? Well, we can see because we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to r squared, then our center here is going to be at the origin. So our center is actually at 0, 0, 0 in 3D space. And 14 is not the radius, right? It's our radius squared, right? This is saying that r squared is 14. So if r squared is 14, then that means our radius is actually the square root of 14. So now we'll just make sure that we can handle any case even when our sphere is not centered at the origin. So our sphere in space could have center at any coordinates, and the way we'll think of using the same idea that we just had in almost the same formula will just be to look at doing a translation in the x, y, and z directions. So this equation here, what we call the general center radius form, here this represents the same sphere, but it's simply shifted, you'll notice each coordinate, it's shifted by a units in the x direction, it's shifted by b units in the y direction, and it's shifted by c units in the z direction. So this equation is actually going to take care of all cases for us, no matter where the center is. This is our center radius form. Here you can see because we've shifted a in the x direction, b in the y direction, and c in the z direction, our center for the sphere is actually going to be at a comma b comma c. Our radius is still r, of course, with r squared over there on the other side. When the center of our sphere is at the origin, that's just the case when a, b, and c are all zero in this formula, so we can still sort of think of this top one we started with fitting into our center radius form here. So let's just look at a couple of sphere equations based on this general center radius form that we just had. So we want to find the center and the radius for the given sphere equations we have here. If we look at our first one, we have the quantity x minus 4 squared plus the quantity y plus 1 squared plus the quantity z minus 2 all squared equal to 20. Okay, so if we think about what our a, b, and c are in this formula here, and notice it's minus, right? So what am I subtracting here with x for my x-coordinate. Well, in this square here, I'm subtracting 4. So my x-coordinate 
where the center is 4. y minus b squared, here y plus 1 squared, so what am I actually subtracting to get a positive 1? I'd actually have to subtract negative 1, right? We can think about changing the sign of what's in there. So y minus negative 1 would be the same as y plus 1, so our b is actually negative 1, so our y coordinate for the center is negative 1. And here z minus c squared is z minus 2 squared, so you can see that our c, our z coordinate, or the center is going to be 2. So just from the left side we get that the center of our sphere is 4, negative 1, 2. Looking over here at the right side we can tell that r squared is going to be 20. And so if we think about taking the square root of both sides and knowing that the radius really should be thought of as a positive value then we get that r is the square root of 20. We can actually simplify that. If we think of the square root of 4 times 5 we could then pull out the square root of 4 which we already know which is 2. So on the outside we'd have a 2. We'll go ahead and say that's 2 root 5 units for the radius there. Looking at our second one here we have x squared plus the quantity y minus 3 squared plus the quantity z plus 5 squared is equal to 5 over 4. Now you'll notice in this first term we don't really have a quantity with some subtraction in it, right? You could think of this as subtraction if you want to. This is similar to the first expression we gave you for a sphere centered at the origin. This is like having x minus 0 all squared, right? Nothing is being subtracted here. So what is the a that you see here? Well a is really Really zero. So we didn't shift from the origin any in the x direction actually. So our x coordinate for our center is going to be zero here. Here you can see we're subtracting three, so our b up here in this center radius form is actually going to be three here. And then we have z plus five, that's supposed to look like z minus c, and the way we get plus five is for c to be negative five. Minus negative five would be the same as plus five here. So we actually have negative five for our z coordinate of our center. So 0, 3, negative 5 is our center. And over here, just like before with the 20, this is really our r squared, right? So this tells us that r squared is equal to 5 over 4. And obviously then that means that r should be the square root of 5 over 4. Now let's go ahead and split this up. So that would be the same as the square root of 5 over the square root of 4. We can do that with square roots, right? So we'll just change this root 4 to a 2 and we'll say that our radius is equal to the square root of 5 over 2. If we work the other direction now, so here we want to write the formula for a sphere but we're actually given the center and radius. So what we'll need to do if we have a center of negative 1 half comma 0 comma positive 3 fourths, we'll need to plug these into the formula and the same thing we did when we pulled them out of the formula, we'll need to change the signs as we put them in the formula. So my negative 1 half here going in for my a, x minus negative 1 half in that square would be like x plus 1 half squared. Plus, now if I had y minus 0 in here and I put that in for b, that would just be like y, right? So this second term here is just going to be y squared. Plus, and then if we had positive 3 fourths, z minus 3 fourths is going to go in there, so that would be z minus 3 fourths, quantity all squared, equal to r squared. Here we have a radius of 4, so if radius is 4, then that means r squared is 16, right? So we have equal to 16, and that is our answer for the equation of the sphere with this center and this radius. Let's look at a couple where it might be asked a little bit differently than just going one direction or the other given center radius or given a formula. So here we've got one that says let's find the equation for a sphere centered at 3 comma negative 4 comma 1 and we want our sphere to be tangent to the origin. Okay, so that means that our actual surface, our sphere, actually intersects the origin. So the idea is really that we have some sphere in 3D space and its center is 3, negative 4, 1. We think 3 and then negative 4 and then 1. So maybe it's somewhere over here is the center of our sphere. And the problem says it is tangent to the origin, so our sphere centered there actually goes through the origin. So you can think of, you know, we have this sphere in 3D space, and it goes through 0, 0, 0, but the center is some other point. And we want to find the equation for this sphere. 
Well, we're given the center at least, so that definitely tells us what's going on equation-wise on the left side. So if I change the sign of each of these, making it subtract in there, then I will actually get x minus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared plus z minus 1 squared is equal to r squared, right? And so what we're really missing here is we're not given any info about the radius. We have to go find it. Well, we know the center and we know that it goes through 0, 0, 0. So the question is then how do we find the radius? Well, if this is the center and that's a point on the sphere, then the radius is actually going to be whatever distance is between those two points there, right? Between our 3, negative 4, 1 and the origin. So we'll think of using these two points. So we have our center here. We also have 0, 0, 0. So if I think of this first point as x1, y1, and z1, I think of this second point, the origin, as x2, y2, and z2, then I'm just using the distance formula in space to find this radius here, right? So this radius is actually going to be the square root of, if you remember, this is x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared plus z2 minus z1 all squared, and then we have the square root of all that, right? So that's actually going to give us then the square root of, if I do x2 minus x1, that would be 0 minus 3, which would give me negative 3 squared plus y2 minus y1, 0 minus negative 4 would be 4, so we have 4 squared plus z2 minus z1, 0 minus 1 would be negative 1, so we have negative 1 squared. And we'll go ahead and say what that is. So that will be the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 1, which is actually the square root of 26. Okay, so we have our center, we have our radius. Now let's just go ahead and take our radius and put it in there. We just want to make sure when we put it in the formula we square it. So we'll actually need to square that and we'll actually just get 26. So we'll say quantity x minus 3 squared plus y plus 4 squared plus z minus 1 squared is equal to 26. Looking at last one here, find the equation for a sphere with antipodal points p, which is 6, 3, negative 1, and q, which is negative 2, 1, negative 5. So if you need to Google this real quick, or we'll just tell you what this means in our video here, antipodal points are simply points that are on the opposite side of the sphere from one another. Okay, so if you think about your sphere over here maybe, and so we've got, here's the front, and then it kind of goes back in there. So antipodal points would be points that are, you know, say here and down here, right? So the distance all the way across, really, between them. So we're not given a center. We're not given a radius either. So we need to go find both. Let's start maybe with the center. So how would we go about finding the center? Well, if these are antipodal points, then where is the center in relation to them? It's exactly halfway in between them, right? So the center is actually what we probably have found before in 3D space. This is actually the midpoint of P and Q, right, in my problem here. So we could simply figure out the midpoint of P and Q, and that is simply just, remember, adding those coordinates up and then dividing each by two, right? So our midpoint, our center, is going to equal, so just keep it together here, 6 and negative 2 are the x. So 6 plus negative 2, remember we add the coordinates and we divide by 2. That's how we get a midpoint. So for each of those, that's what we'll do. So the y's we have 3 and 1, so we'll take 3 plus 1, divide by 2. And z we have negative 1 and negative 5. We have negative 1 plus negative 5, divide by 2. So we'll go ahead and say what this is. So 6 plus negative 2 would be 6 minus 2, which is 4. 4 divided by 2 would be 2 here. We have 3 plus 1 divided by 2. That also gives us 2. And then negative 1 plus negative 5 would be like minus 5. So negative 6 divided by 2 would give us negative 3. So our center we now know is 2, 2, negative 3. So we have our center. Now we simply need to figure out our radius.
So here the radius, I guess, if we already have the center, we could go about a couple of different ways. Um, we could take the point that we just got and figure the distance between it and one of the points we had on the sphere, and that would be our radius. We could also just go ahead and find the distance all the way across between P and Q. That's what we would call a diameter of the sphere, right? And we could just take what we get from that and cut it in half. Either way you want to do it. I'll just go ahead and take my center and I'm going to find the distance between my center and one of my other points. Let's say uh, P. Okay, so I'll go ahead and call this uh, X1, Y1, Z1. We're going to use the same formula for distance that we had before. So this will be my X2, Y2, Z2 here. So our radius is actually going to equal the square root of 2 minus 6, which would be negative 4 squared. So this is just the distance formula we used in the last example. y2 minus y1 is 2 minus 3, which would be negative 1. So we'll get negative 1 squared there, plus z2 minus z1 squared. So z2 would be negative 3 minus negative 1 would be like plus 1. We get negative 2 squared there. All right, and if we think about what we have here, that's the square root of 16 plus 1 plus 4. And so that actually then gives us the square root of 21 for our radius. So we'll go ahead and write in everything now. We have our center. So this is our center. And this is our radius here. So if we write it in this form then, our x minus a squared would be x minus 2 squared plus y minus b squared would be y minus 2 also squared. z here we have a negative 3, so minus negative 3 is going to give us a z plus 3 quantity squared in this one. And then if the radius is square root 21, we want to square that. That's going to drop the root off, and that will just give us a 21 there. In our next video coming up in the series, we actually do some of these sphere equations that involve completing the square to figure out the equation or to find the center and radius. You can check out more sphere examples in our completing the square video after this. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.